whimsy inspiration. I saw this on Pixabay. I was actually just looking for a set of condiments to paint. Like I thought a set of ketchup and mustard would be fun. And then I saw this one and it made me laugh. And even though it's a little macabre from the point of view of the poor tomato, uh, but I thought it was kind of funny. So anyway, I picked it for whimsy and I'm going to approach it with direct painting. I've drawn out the major parts of the piece and I think that it actually has a number of, of challenges, which is, you know, for something whimsical, um, there's quite a bit going on in this piece. So we've got a variety of different colors up in here, and we've got some soft, real soft shading in the whites of the lid. We've got to create a round and smooth tomato, and we've got this very slick approach in the ketchup itself. Almost really doesn't even look like ketchup, but I'm assuming it is. And also there's some lettering and detail work. So for a whimsical piece, I, I think there's it's gonna be a little bit of work. I've selected direct painting uh, simply because of the amount of, of different types of things going on. I'm going to start by putting in some of the reds. And this is red pepper. There's a variety of different red um, inks you can use. And I think, you know, the painting will look better if you use several different shades. So we'll start with the red pepper and I'm just going to paint it in. And I'll do the same for the second tomato. coming down to the ketchup. And I'll paint in the red parts of the ketchup bottle. Some, a lot of orange and reflected color up here. This is Raisin, and it's one of the kind of darker reds. There's that and cranberry and currant, and I'm going to use this for the shadows. Might not be dark enough, but we'll start with it. I'm also going to use this color for some of the uh, darker parts of our ketchup bottle. And the same with the tomato. and the ketchup. This is Valencia. And I'm gonna use it in some of the lighter parts. It's kind of an orange. And over in the ketchup bottle. And I suppose it wouldn't be complete if we didn't just add a little bit of it to our ketchup. And 
now going to look at the white lid and I'm starting with pink sharpen and it's kind of a reflected color maybe not as dark as this but I can probably lift it I think I would like to erase out those lines as well much of this color off as I can. I'm going to do the same thing with the label. And I've actually just added a little bit of alcohol to the pink sherbet before I put it on here. I'd like to just tone it a little bit so that it's not pure white. I realize I'm kind of pulling that graphite around. I'm just trying to see if this will pick up some of that. So I should have lifted the graphite off before I did this. So, the good news is you can learn from my mistakes. And I want to lighten this piece too. I'm grabbing a little bit of the raisin and I'm going to put it in the hole for the ketchup. Take a minute to see if I can erase any of these lines. The next pale color I'd like to use is Lemonade. And because this cap is against a white table, one of the two of them has to be a color that's not white because otherwise we just won't see it. the same at the top. And I will probably lift it as well to just lighten it a little bit, but at least we can get some color in here. And I think I'll put some of that in this part of the cap. And while I have a yellow out, I'll add it to some of these upper parts of the ketchup bottle. It seems to be taking off on me, hopefully not too far. This is the pink sherbet again. I think that this side of the lid would benefit from this color. The third color I'm going to add is cloudy blue and it tends to stain pretty blue, which is fine because I think it's really actually the stain color that I'm looking for here. We have several other white areas. We've got an area over here, we've got some highlights, and I don't think they're white. And looking at my three colors that I picked, I think that the uh, Pink Sherbet's going to be the best choice. So I'm going to just go ahead and tone these white areas. And now I'll go back through and lift and blend.
still have some darker rims and I'm going to use Cool Perry. I'm going to come around the bottom of this. And I'll do a little more blending. For the lettering and the eyes and the um, some of these other darker areas, I'm going to use some eggplant. And I'm just gonna let it sit up a little bit, get it a little bit thicker. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and put in this uh, green line. This is the vine for the tomatoes. And while this is thickening, I'm going to Add a little bit of it in, into this uh, hole here. And I think we could use it for some of the shadows. It's still not really thick enough, so just keep kind of adding it to some other darker areas. All right, I think I'm ready to go for the... And it's still not that dark. I'm gonna put a little bit of it over here and then grab some of this bottle and make kind of a... darker green. At this point, I'd like to switch to a water and alcohol mixture. And I had to experiment with this to find, looking for a mixture that um, is just enough to dissolve a little bit of the ink so that I can bring it over across the adjacent part, but not so much that um, we've, you know, completely erasing out anything. So I can't really tell you exactly what that percent is. I just had to experiment until I got something that um, seemed to work. And I'm just going to try to um, adjust these edges for a slightly better blend. This edge is being particularly persnickety about blending. I'm going to go around to the tomatoes and try a little blending here. and the second tomato. And the ketchup. So it appears clearly that all the reds are happy to blend, but the eggplant and current, this purpley one, is just not wanting to blend, at least at this percent of alcohol that I have. I'm going to do the same in the shadows. And I think I might have to really 
resort to a stronger alcohol blend. No, maybe not. I think that's a yes. So this is the regular alcohol. Ooh, that's, see how much, that's way stronger. Whoa, hello there. Nice thing about that shadow is it defines the edge of the lid a little bit. Now that I've got this alcohol, I'm going to use it on these, the persnickety edges that wouldn't blend before. Come in and change this rim shape a little bit. We don't have the fact that it's really kind of dimensional here. The highlights a little bit. We tone them back, but let me see if I can bring back parts of them anyway. This is the pitch black. I'm going to drop it in the eggplant and use this to uh, darken the eyes. And to work on the lettering. This might be better done with the marker, but I'm actually determined to do this piece only with the brush. I think I'm going to go ahead and put in the nose and mouth here. And the little tears. I'll we'll also use this very dark mixture at the base. This is Poppy Field. I'm going to put in the tomato that's in the label. edges I wanted to um, clean up. More things I want to do. Um, we need to somehow define the other edge of this lid. That may not be the right choice, but we got to do something. I'm going to lift that back out. And then there's a gold stripe that needs to come on here. This is butterscotch. And I think the other thing I wanted to uh, go back over was the rim of the eyes here. a little more like some a little more softness around these highlights maybe I can just lift this edge put down the ink and then sort of lift it
All right, I know it's not perfect, but I think that I might decide it's just good enough. <laughs>